20 miles outside Sofia, on the road to the house that Maxwell bought, the grandest modern property in all Bulgaria. But to many ordinary people, this building, Bitsistra, is a symbol of the unholy partnership between Maxwell and the communists. The partners may have made millions, but now Bulgaria wants its money back. I always uh, uh, was suspicious uh, about the Maxwell operations in, uh, in Bulgaria. It was clear that uh, his operations was uh, especially designed to use the communist corruption, uh, the communist ruler's corruption, the communist interests uh, uh, in the Western world in order to get benefits. Do you think his operations were illegal? Yes. The capitalist meets the communist, despots both. Please take a seat, Mr. Maxwell. <coughs> Todor Zhivkov, who ran Bulgaria with a whip hand for 45 years, became close to Robert Maxwell during the 1980s. While others shied away from one of Eastern Europe's most hardline regimes, Maxwell thrived. He did so by slavishly praising the dictator. It's an indication, Mr. President, of uh, your continued popularity. If your popularity is as good as your health. In 1981, Todor Shivkov's Great Thoughts were published in English, courtesy of Robert Maxwell's Pergamon Press. This somewhat difficult book included a foreword by Maxwell himself. He writes of Bulgaria as a prosperous and happy nation under the leadership of the Communist Party and its General Secretary, Todor Zhivkov. It was a big lie, but Maxwell was now in business with the Communists, a relationship which was mutually beneficial. Maxwell simply worked on with different Communists. Nothing really changed until the end of 1990, when the regime was finally toppled. Suddenly, for Robert Maxwell, Bulgaria was a different proposition. For more than a year now, the prosecuting authorities here in the Bulgarian capital, Sofia, have been conducting a criminal investigation into the financial affairs of the old communist regime. They're seeking to apportion blame for what's universally known as the economic catastrophe, the crippling $11 billion foreign debt. It's a huge and complex inquiry into a tangled web of international financial deals. They want to know where the money went. One name they keep on coming across is that of Robert Maxwell. Newsnight has obtained a copy of the contract for the sale of Bitsistra. It's dated the 6th of April 1990. It shows Maxwell paid the communists 6,078,000 lever. That's about £150,000 for a 50-year lease. Robert Maxwell's signature appears on the final page. The contract was ratified by the government, the Ministerial Council, in a document on the 21st of May. This shows the property wasn't just cheap, Maxwell could also enjoy tax-free profits for five years. In the eyes of the new non-communist government, the deal is highly suspicious. It is very astonishing that, first of all, the government uh, chose uh, Maxwell, because uh, normally in this country, uh, when we proceed uh, to such uh, projects, uh, you have a, uh, an auction first. And second, the price is ridiculous. The price is, uh, uh, let me say, 10 times less than the real price. On Friday, the Bitsistra deal goes to Sofia's central court. The new government are determined to have the contracts nullified. And their investigators are now trying to unravel all the deals involving Robert Maxwell. In connection with Robert Maxwell, we have no evidence that he committed criminal offences in Bulgaria. But this will be a question which will be discussed in the next few days by the Bulgarian Minister of Finance and by the Interior Minister. In the end, they will see whether there is any evidence of criminal activity at all. If there is, the inquiry will be widened and we would expect the English authorities to help us in our investigations. The head of Bulgaria's Parliamentary Economic Commission is already demanding an explanation for another Maxwell deal. Asen Michkovsky believes the communists used Maxwell to spirit millions of dollars abroad. According to Asen Michkovsky, document 63 of Bulgaria's Foreign Currency Committee shows that on April the 24th, 1988, a group of ministers decided in secret to send money abroad 
by investing up to $200 million in shares through Britain. The middleman for the deal was Robert Maxwell. He was to get double the commission the Bulgarians normally paid. The reason, according to the document, was payment for the risk he was taking. The company through which the money was to be invested was the Maxwell-controlled London and Bishopsgate International Investment Management, PLC. The decision was made to invest up to $200 million from the Bulgarian Strategic Currency Reserve. The first tranche of this investment amounted to $50 million. Provision was also made so that no further decision was needed for more investments of 50 or 100 million. What I can say for sure, and I have evidence to prove this, is that the initial 50 million was definitely invested. What happened to the rest of the money is difficult for me to say because all the documents are still being kept secret. The deal says Maxwell was taking a risk, but, but what risk? What risk was he taking? Mr. Maxwell, in fact, didn't take any kind of risk at all because he was a major shareholder in the Bishopsgate company and because it wasn't his money he was investing anyway. And we know he was given this higher commission rate twice the normal. Revelations about Bitsistra and now the currency deals have left a cloud over all Maxwell's business affairs in Bulgaria. The problem is no one in the new government is sure what exactly he did own. His negotiations to buy a giant printing works from the communists were stopped when the old regime fell. But he'd already bought a major share in the Balkan film industry and in computing. Intriguingly, he also co-founded a new bank, which is reportedly being used by Bulgaria's leading arms trader. But equally interesting are the deals which apparently didn't come off. For example, his aborted plan to invest heavily in a resort on the Black Sea. He signed a large check for this, one of a number he apparently handed over for deals which never happened. So what was going on? It's very strange, uh, uh, and uh, we have information that some of the checks uh, amounted uh, of a million pounds. And, uh, of course, uh, we are very suspicious, and uh, we think that uh, this, is a, mm, this is a way of laundering money from UK or from the United States and so on. So you're saying that Maxwell signed cheques? Yes. For deals that were never done? Yes. What do you believe happened to that money? Uh, I have no strict evidence because this is the bank secrecy, uh, uh, of course, as in other countries. But it seems to me that this money uh, uh, came in Bulgaria and then uh, was uh, transferred to another country or to another banking account, and that's the laundering of money. Whatever the truth, it won't be found here, in what were Communist Party headquarters. Security sources say that a mysterious fire just after the demise of the regime destroyed valuable evidence. But what of the personalities from the old party? Shivkov himself, seen here at the front at a final party congress, said he'd only speak to us if we paid him a minimum of $5,000. Further along the front row is Ognian Doinov, a former Politburo member the Bulgarian authorities would like to interview. But Mr Doinov has now moved from the heart of Bulgarian politics. Today he lives in an apartment in central London. We saw him yesterday as he left for his work about two miles away. For Mr. Doinov, has an office on the fifth floor of Maxwell House. For the past year, he's been employed in Maxwell Communication Corporation's international section. Mr. Doinov told me he doesn't want to be interviewed by Newsnight because he doesn't want to get involved in British or Bulgarian politics. He was initially hired by Robert Maxwell as Maxwell's advisor on African affairs, although he says he now concerns himself with Eastern Europe. Exactly what influence a former member of a reviled Politburo can now have on the non-communist governments of Eastern Europe is difficult to imagine. But Mr Doinoff describes his salary as attractive, it's in excess of £100,000 a year, and, as he puts it, the work is clean. Back in Sofia, the communists, who now call themselves socialists, are making their last stand. They're protesting at a new law which will mean the party has to surrender all its property, buildings the communists themselves confiscated as much as 50 years ago. So the old biters are to be bit 